Direct modeling is often referred to as destructive modeling. For example, if I create a cube, add segments, increase the radius attribute to round off the edges, and then drop the tool, I can't go back and adjust the amount of segments or the radius attribute. This is why it's called destructive modeling. Once I drop the tool, I've committed those settings. Procedural modeling enables you to create assets with a non-destructive workflow. This means you can make edits to an earlier operation while keeping recent operations intact. Let's take a look. When working with procedural modeling, you're going to want access to the Mesh Operations viewport. I'll add it to the right viewport. Start by adding a cube to the stack using the Add Operator button and double-clicking on the cube operator. Adjust the segments and radius value. Unlike the direct modeling approach, this mesh item will remain live. Select some polygons on the cube, add a bevel operator, adjust the shift attribute, and then return to the cube. With the cube operator selected, adjust the radius as well as the dimensions of the cube itself. The attributes are still live. Pretty cool, right? Now it's important to remember that the direct modeling tools can't be used on procedural mesh items and will be grayed out in the UI. You'll need to perform all of your edits using the procedural versions of the tools and commands found in the browser. Both direct and procedural modeling methods have their place in most production, so you'll want to explore both. Having both types of modeling approaches in your toolkit will make you a more flexible artist.